So, Doug, let's start right here, and then I'm going to let you and J.D. kind of take it away here. I'm really frustrated with some of these protesters, and we had one of them on our show. Her name is Pan Bennett. Uh, she is in an organization called Nevadans Against Extended Quarantine on Facebook, and you know, she made the case that uh, she's defending the fact that she's not practicing social distancing when she protested, as many did across the country. What are your thoughts on these protesters, and do you agree with me that it's irresponsible and it is political because many of these people have Donald Trump signs? What's your take on this? I agree with you completely. I think it's selfish, and I think it's very politically motivated. So, J.D., you've said on the show, you've said it today, J.D., you've What's said that? it in the past, that you don't believe these protests are political. Why do you say that, and why do you disagree no, I, with I, that? I'm saying some are, obviously, but I don't think that – I think that you, when you make the statement that these protests are political, you mean that for everybody they're political. No, that's not what I said. And, and I, I'm sure that for maybe 15, 20 percent they are political. But for the majority, they just want to get back to work. They want to get back to their normal life. I would say it's probably life. closer to 80, 85. Okay, well, I, and I think you're wrong, and that's fine. We can, we can disagree. I'm not going to call you a buffoon or an idiot or a moron. Even though I may think it, I'm not going to call you that openly. You don't think that about Doug. I don't. I actually like Doug a lot. I think he's a very <laughs> smart guy. We just, we just have different ideologies, which I can respect. Well, what I don't respect is people that put others' lives at risk for their selfish benefit. I call them buffoons, and, and, I, and I think Doug would agree with me on that. Well, you that. know, I want to give you a stat, Brian. I know, I know you hate it when I give you stats because I'm not a doctor and I'm not you know, actually qualified to give any stats. But if you're 35 years old, you have a .30 chance of dying in the next year. With the coronavirus, that's .32. If you're 45 years old, that goes up to 0 0.60 and 0.75. If you're 55, it goes up to about 0.8 and 1.6. If you're 65, it goes from 1.6 to 3.5. What I'm saying is this is not overly increasing. The, the mortality rate is not significantly higher than your actual age. And the, Doug, what would the, you the, say the that? chance of dying based like, for example, if you're, if, legitimately, if you're 95 years old, Right. Without, corona, without coronavirus, you have a 26.7% chance of dying in the next year. With coronavirus, it's about 35%. That's, that's, that's across the board. So there's, there's definitely disparity. There's definitely a higher risk here of losing your life to the coronavirus, but it isn't significantly higher than losing your life to anything based on your age group over the course of one year. Doug, what would be your response to that? There are other people on the right that make that same claim. What would, what would be your response to that? Well, that gets back to yours and my reasoning that these protests are selfish because, by and large, they're being done by younger people, and they could quite possibly be carrying the virus and give it to someone older. Isn't this ironic, too, Doug? Of course. And, and again, I'm not, I'm not sorry. Sorry, Brian. I'm not suggesting that protests should be done without social distancing. Any protest, and I'm, I'm part of this group as well, Doug, and actually part of, part of the group says one, one statement that was, that was made was, hey, we do not support any protests that don't adhere to, to social distancing laws. Well, that's not and what Pam did. Pam mentioned that she was the first ever protest. She said that she, she danced. She ran out there. She was the first one who was out there. That's all she was saying. And that was not this group. That was a totally different group. That was the first. We, we've started a whole different group that's got almost 4,000 people. I mean, invites that are, coming in, that are coming in constantly. But based on this new group, and I do see a protest coming if, if, if this is not lifted by May 1st, a big protest, probably in the Las Vegas trip. But based on this group, I am recommending, and so are the other admins of the page, that social distancing should take place. I'm not suggesting that social distancing should should play, take place, Brian. Well, Pam defended Far it. Far from that's um, fine, but that's not me. So, Doug, what do you make of, of some people like JD, like my co-host, who think that uh, people are going to be out there with their guns, and if in, in a month from now, if we're still closed down, there's going to be so much outrage that people are going to uh, go against uh, all politicians, and there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people protesting in every state across the country. What do you say to that? I say the presence of AR-15s and Nazi flags just drive home the point that this is not about the virus or the stay-at-home orders. Um, it, it's strictly political. J.D., what would you say to that? I, I, and I, if there was not, if all of our lives, if you're in a, if you're in a state that's in lockdown, if all of our, if you can't go to work and you can't go to the gym and your life hasn't been drastically changed, and for example, if you have two kids at home now they can't go to school, so they're going to be at home for the next five or six months, and and you don't live in a huge place and you're around your spouse more than you ever were in your life, if if none of that was taking place, I would agree with you, Doug. But there's well, a lot of things, but but there's a lot of things that are taking place, a lot of lives that are being drastically changed, and there and the protests I, I are but like for me for me, for me I, I'm, I'm not trying I, for me it's not right political. Now, we had an intelligent president in the White House who lived in the real world and was not that necessary? in his own fantasy world. And it was 
it, say, say Doug, Doug, it's, it's hard say for me to answer your question Obama. based on based on a no, based on a, a you know a fantasy hypothetical. Right, right. Um, okay, so I mean, ask me, ask me, ask me a question, and, and don't insult Donald Trump in the process, and I will answer it honestly. Well, it's hard not to. <laughs> I agree with that, by the way. Go ahead, Doug. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, considering Donald Trump is the leading cause of death in America right now, I mean, it's hard not to insult him, at least to remain honest. But my point is, let let's say Donald Trump was. Shall we say different? I'll, I'll leave out the insults. Different, and he was ordering everybody to to you know practice social distancing. Do you think these people would be showing up and protesting? No, they're doing it because it's political. Because no matter how much Donald Trump advocates social distancing, he turns right around and tweets stuff: "Liberate Michigan, liberate Minnesota." He's encouraging these people to violate his own guidelines. And if he didn't do that, and he stuck to one thing, which of which he's incapable, if he stuck to Wait, one he, guidance, and uh, people would not be showing up. It's political. He is not telling them not to adhere to social distancing. He is saying it is your right to protest, liberate the state. At, at no point he is saying liberate the state and and stand six inches away from each other. You know, put stand there holding hands in a giant circle of a hundred thousand people circling the entire city of Detroit. He's not saying that. He's just saying liberate the state. And I agree with that, Pat. I agree with that. Doug, how but can how can I not? Is, again, you're applying nuance where none exists. Donald Trump doesn't know the meaning of the word nuance, and neither do a lot of his followers. And when he says liberate Michigan, they interpret that as show up and protest. And he even lied in the briefing and said, oh, they were practicing social distancing. They were six feet apart. No, no, they weren't. They were crammed together. Well, some were and some were. Most of them were actually in cars driving up and down next to the Capitol in Lansing. Okay, but hold on. Let me interject here real quick. Doug is right in, the, in this aspect, J.D., and you might disagree, but his words say it all. Doug is right. In the press conference yesterday, Donald Trump said that they were practicing social distancing. He didn't say half were. He didn't say some were. If you look at the videos in every single protest, in every single one, you can find instances where people were not practicing social distancing. The president is lying, J.D. Again, I believe he said it looked like they were practicing social distancing. Oh, he's wrong. It looked like they were practicing social distancing to me is what he said. He didn't say they were absolutely practicing social distancing. Well, so so I mean, you're okay with that? That's difference without a distinction, okay. J.D. Come on. Well, uh, no, it's, that, that's, a, that's mad. I mean, that, when, when, people, when people like you and Brian take a statement and look for anything you can to dice it up and, and, and to make Donald Trump look bad, that's, that's very important. What part of that, Liberate that, Michigan do you think helps the country? I, I, it does. I mean, the, the economy, I mean, you need, you need Michigan. You need the Michigan economy for the country. You need, you know you, these economies need to be open for the country to, to be successful, Brian. The country. What, what, sorry, what is missing is that if you've noticed when Donald Trump has done his press briefings lately, he said, oh, and it was done under pressure. It was done under pressure. Yeah, it was done under pressure because you failed to act when you were advised to. And everybody's squawking about reopening the economy and no one's saying, well, you know what? Maybe if you had acted on January 23rd when the WHO issued their guidance regarding isolation, et cetera, et cetera, instead of going golfing and holding rallies and going to fundraisers and tweeting and watching cable network TV, maybe we wouldn't be in this position now where we have to even have a debate over this. You know, I, I believe he was also getting impeached at that time. And Anthony Fauci on January 26th said it wouldn't be an issue. He, he said the same thing on February 26th, and as you know, as you know now, the, the, from the, this, this, Trump this, is withdrawing money the, the, from. The, yes, he should. He should be doing that. He, based that based on the misinformation from China, isolate. he should be doing that. That that should be taking place. That's that's the right decision. All that stuff should be taking place. And he shut down China to what on, on the 31st of January? No, he didn't. He didn't. No, I'm he pretty didn't. sure he did. No, he didn't. He issued a travel ban that was full of loopholes, and after he issued it, he allowed 40,000 travelers from China to come to this country. For what reason? Huh? Why? For what reason? Why were they able to get through? What was the loophole because that they took advantage of? the travel ban wasn't. I mean, that's, a, that, that's his big get-out-of-jail-free card. If you saw that exchange last Monday between CBS White House correspondent Paula Reed and Donald Trump, I he kept it. going back, I did a ban. I did a ban. Which I closed did. the country down. He that did was do a on ban. January thirty-first. Well, let me ask you this: What if what if he had shut down the economy? What if he had shut down the January thirty-first and March sixteenth? Doug, two questions. What, what, what if he had shut down the economy and it was a massive, massive overreaction, and we'll say forty thousand people less died, and the caseload ended up being um, hundred or eighty thousand? 
do you think that Democrats would have got on him for shutting down the economy but and see, ruining the economy? The premise, JD. They, they would. They would have absolutely done that. My second. My second question is. Well, let him ask that first one first, and then uh, ask your uh, okay. second one. Okay. Go ahead, Doug. Okay, on January 21st, South Korea and the United States both had their first case. South Korea did not implement a travel ban, but immediately started following the WHO guidelines and isolated and tested. A month later, they had 100 deaths. We had 150. That was on March 20th. A month later, on April 20th, they're only up to 186 deaths, and we have 45,000. So tell me, what worked? A South Korea and no travel ban but isolation and testing or Donald Trump and his travel ban and nothing else? J.D.? Well, I'd answer that with Mayor, Mayor Bill de Blasio on March 3rd suggesting that all New Yorkers actually you know, live your life as usual. That's how I'd answer that question. Yes, and, and a lack of national leadership. Everybody was left to fend for themselves and do what they wanted to do or whether, whatever they thought they should do. We had no national leadership. Bill de Blasio wasn't getting the daily briefings. Donald Trump was. J.D.? Anthony, again, Anthony Fauci, the, the, the expert on this in the country, as late as January 26th, said nothing to worry about. February 26th, a full month later, when I believe we had 15 entire cases in the, in the country at that point. By the way, Doug, did you see the new autopsy that came out yesterday? The who? The autopsy. Remember, the, the first death was supposed to be February 29th in Washington State. Well, it turns out the first death was actually February 6th in California, and that was probably one of many because there was three autopsies done yesterday uh, in, in California that showed that there were three deaths from February 6th to March 6th. All three were communicable diseases. No, no one, none of these people had actually traveled to China. They had not been out of the country. They had not been around someone who had the virus. So the thought process is across the country right now, the mortality rate is significantly smaller than what has been discussed. Do you think that we have a problem in Nevada right now? Do you think that Las Vegas has been, quote-unquote, hit hard by this disease, Doug? Do I think we've been hit hard? No, we yes, haven't. you haven't. Okay. So but do you I'll think tell that... you what, if we open up, guess who's going to come here? Who? The people from around the country. No, and, and I agree. If we open up the Strip, that would probably be the case. But you don't think that we should open up the other businesses around the Strip? I'm talking about small businesses, maybe Red Rock Casino, maybe the station, maybe maybe, maybe the local business. You don't think that would be a good thing considering the fact that we're about to lose a billion dollars over the next year? Right, right Again, now, that, 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 that's the estimation, Doug, that one, one, bi one billion earlier, dollars. I would go with the medical experts. And, and if I could just comment on your comments on Dr. Fauci, yeah. I don't understand how what he said at any point – negates or nullifies what the WHO guidance was on January 23rd, which Trump ignored. The, the WHO didn't even say that it was human-to-human -human transmissible until no, the 22nd. No, no, they didn't even say that until the 22nd. And at what that point, and, 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 no, no, and, and Anthony Fauci, at that point, the thought process was that it was not an efficient transmission. That's why Fauci said what he said on the 26th, and that's, what he, that's why he said what he said on the, on Febru on, in February as well, because he was under the impression, based on what China gave the WHO, remember, China, this country with 2 billion people, 80,000 people and 4,000 deaths, that's like a very, very light, like a, a very, very light flu season for the United States. If the United States was actually told how many cases were taking place in China and how many deaths had actually happened in China, they would have been much more prepared. And then you have to factor in the fact that the CDC, the, thing, the CDC, had, they, they, they had contaminated China's the test. Honesty, which we all agree was taking place. Even Donald Trump reluctantly admits that. That doesn't change the fact that he was being warned by his own people as early as January, and now there's stories coming out that say that he knew in December and November. He wasn't listening to his own people, to his own experts. It well, didn't you know, really matter the what first... China was saying. His own experts were telling him China is lying. This is going and, to be serious. Again, and Anthony Fauci, Anthony Fauci is the expert. And Anthony Fauci, he not again, at that he's, point. He, at he that is, point in January, there wasn't even a task force. He didn't announce the task force until you don't the think end of you don't think January, that he had a conversation. You don't think you don't think he had a conversation with, with who they considered the father of infectious diseases and Anthony Fauci. You don't think they had that conversation. Why do you think he's on the task force? Because they they were having conversations before that took place. Anthony Fauci has he's been involved in SARS, so in other words, MERS, Fauci Ebola. Is going to be your AIDS. To, it's to not. It's, he's not. What I'm saying is Anthony. I'm, I'm, say, I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm saying. 
that that Anthony Fauci, who who is you know, the infectious disease the, the, the infectious disease guy, the expert, he was saying based on information that he had gotten from who and from China that this disease was not overly right, efficient in human human transmission. That that's yeah. why that's why Trump thought what he did because Anthony Fauci. Who was who was the guy was under the same yeah. impression, I, and, he, and he was given JD, faulty information from January China and 18th, who? On January 18th, Donald Trump's own Secretary of Health and Human Services, Alex Azar, met with him and told him this was going to be a global pandemic. Trump kept interrupting him and asking when flavored vaping products were going to be back on the market. Okay, I, I mean, find that hard. To, I, I find that, that hard to believe, cons- c- c- considering. Lack of leadership okay. and competence by bringing up Anthony Fauci. Okay, I, I, I find the hard to believe considering the fact that four days after that, that was when who actually admitted that this virus could be transmitted human to human. That's and when they finally Trump made a public do? statement about it. And you and know what? what? The, China do? China wouldn't even let the CDC come. Right, well, on. answer uh, what, what, what this was, question. Okay. What did Trump do about that? Within a week, he, he instituted the travel ban, like I said. There was one Which case was in the. Because, number one, if you go – and I did, I did a whole bit on my show on Saturday. When okay. Dr. Fauci complimented Trump on his travel ban, the timeline he was using was the end of December, the 1st of January, when, when the only cases we knew of were in China. That's not when he implemented this ban. It didn't take effect till February 2nd. And then after he did that ban, he did nothing but hold rallies, go to fundraisers, tweet, lie, et, et cetera, et cetera. He did nothing until Again, that, March 16th when that, that's, he reluctantly that's gave because, social that's because guidelines. He and Anthony Fauci were under the impression, and the most important person here is Anthony he Fauci. He's, under re- the re- remember, he he's, he's the doctor. No, no. His own Again, this was serious, the, the, th- he ignored the thought he process. Was concerned about vaping. Doug, Doug, the thought process. No, he wasn't. The, the thought process is that this virus was not efficiently transmissible human to human. Also, the thought process, and this as, as late as February 14th, who made a joint statement with China? And you can look this up if you want to. But the thought process was that not only was the virus not transmissible human to human, but that asymptomatic cases could not transfer the virus. And that and so which which made this virus kind of like kind of like a flu where you have okay, where those who, all, those, those who those who have severe symptoms, those, those who have severe symptoms transmissible on January. The yes, they did multiple times. 18th, they said China. Ha- Preliminary investigations by China have shown no clear evidence of human-to-human transmission. They didn't endorse. They didn't deny what China said. They just told us what China said. Okay, so that's if, and that's if, all the WHO someone, can do. They don't have any intelligence agency right. of their if, own. They rely someone, on other countries for information. If, if someone told me after that on January right. 23rd, they issued guidelines that said, "quote." All countries should be prepared for containment, including active surveillance, early detection, isolation and case management, contact tracing, and prevention of onward spread of COVID-19. End quote. January 23rd was when they issued those guidelines. Trump did nothing. All right. Uh, just quickly, I want to interject. By the way, if you're just joining us, Doug Basham, uh, liberal talk show host, KDWN, 2 to 4 p.m. on Saturdays. Uh, I think it was just a matter of time before the right went after Dr. Fauci, but let's move on. Doug, I want to get your thoughts on Governor Sisolak yesterday. Obviously, this is the big news in Nevada. My, my quick thought on it was I, I, I think Sisolak is right. He's waiting. He's waiting for the right time, phase zero to phase one. Obviously, J.D. disagrees. We'll get to his opinion in a second. But, Doug, I want to start with you. Your thoughts on that press conference yesterday. Obviously, everybody on the right seems to be going after the governor. All he's simply saying is, I want to wait until it's the right time. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on what took place last night in Carson City? I'm with you 100 percent on that, Brian. I mean, I think he did the right thing. And the fact that these people are going after Sisolak just shows me again it's political. J.D., what are your thoughts? I think that Steve Sisolak uh, is on the verge of possibly tanking the entire Las Vegas economy. And I'm not convinced, based on his history, keep in mind Steve Sisolak in 2012 was involved in uh, a supposed affair. He also sued the McCarran Airport in 2009 for $23 million. What does that have to do with the press conference <laughs> last night? You're talking about a possible affair just, and, a, just, and a lawsuit with saying, McCarran. Not, I am not what? I, I am not convinced that Steve but Sisolak how much did he pay ba- that ba- based on based, based on what I've seen, based on what I've seen, I'm not convinced <laughs> that Steve Sisolak has the best interest of the city of Las Vegas at heart. But you think Since Donald Trump has the best interest of the country? Absolutely. Okay. Doug, go ahead. Absolutely, I do. Wow. I... <laughs> 
That's fine. You know, it's never good for a talk show host to be speechless, but I'm almost at that point now. I mean, how you can <laughs> criticize Steve Sisolak and absolve Donald Trump when he is the national leader. This is a national crisis. It requires national leadership. Trump has and still is providing none. His one job is to protect the American people. His one job was to do testing. His one main job, he schlepped off the governors. That right, is a lack of leadership. That is a lack of competence. That is ineptness. That is Donald Trump. Can I just, okay. Let me just interject real quick. I have to say this here. Can Judge. I just interject he real goes, quick, and then you got the floor. Uh, I, have I brought up Stormy Daniels in this coronavirus nope. pandemic? No, I haven't, right? Have I brought up the fact, uh, you know, in, in this coronavirus pandemic that he, 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 you know, he insults women and that he's a womanizer or whatever you want to call it? Have I brought that up? No. So, and you know how much I can't stand Donald Trump, by the way, J.D., but I haven't brought up sure. all, all of his horrendous things he said and his behavior. I've tried to stay away from that. So my question is, why would you bring up Sisolak's possible affair? By the way, you don't even know if that's true. Why would you even bring that into this no, conversation? No, there, there, there's definitely an article about it, Brian. Well, why would you bring but, that up? That what does being, that have to do well, with because it? Because I, I, the way you feel about Donald Trump as a human being, I'm starting to feel the same way about Steve Sisolak. You're, you, you, you talk about how, how Donald Trump is a horrible human being all the time. And I'm saying, I'm saying I, don't, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I am starting to feel that way about Steve right. Well, Doug, let's which get is, Which is, again, that's, that's totally, I, I'm entitled to that. That is my opinion and my right. And, and Doug, if you're telling me that, that going on a national stage in front of 10 to 15 million people every single day for 90 minutes is not leadership, I don't know what is. Oh, for God's sake, it would be leadership if he stuck to the topic of the coronavirus. He, he doesn't. He, does. he wasted 10 minutes the other day on a story about Mark Meadows crying. I mean, here's what I don't understand. You're, you're saying that his appearances on these briefings are showing leadership. I disagree 110%. And that's these fine. These are supposed to be coronavirus briefings. Donald Trump gets up there, and every day it's the same thing. I did this better than anyone's ever done before. I mean, the, the insufferable narcissism, the, the textbook sociopathy, the fact that he has to make everything about himself. He cannot mention another leader's name without saying, he's a friend of mine. I mean, this needy, pathetic narcissism. And first of all, they're not his friends. Even Britain's Trump, Boris, laughed at him at the last meeting of world leaders. They all know he's a buffoon, and what I don't understand is how someone can watch him get up there at these virus briefings, turn them into one of his rallies, and, and, and see, I don't know, this, this narcissism, and he has to make it all about him. Oh, the, the testing has nothing to do with Republican and Democratic governors not having the proper testing yeah. materials. They're just out to get me. Everything well, I suppose me, me, yeah. I, me, me with this, and that's not leadership. That is pathetic, needy yeah. narcissism. I suppose Kanye West could get up there and hold a coronavirus press briefing as well, but I'm not sure people would call that leadership either. I think anybody could go up there on a stage and make it about themselves. But you know what, Doug? I want to make this next minute about you, my friend. Talk a little bit about your show every Saturday. Uh, and uh, I, I'm a big fan of it myself. I listen to it every week. Tell me a little bit about your show and what you got planned for this weekend. Well, that's a good question. Actually, one of the things I'm thinking of focusing on was his second run-in with another CBS reporter and I'm not going to try and pronounce her name right now. It's Waiki Yang or something. It's, it's a tough one. I don't have one. it yeah, in front of me. One. It's a strange No, name. she did a great job. She did a great yeah, job. And that, her yeah, whole I agree. point is, and this is what every reporter should say to Donald Trump. Everybody says, I did a ban. I did a ban. It's just like, <laughs> first of all, your ban was full of loopholes. You still allowed 40,000 people to come here, and you did that the end of January. Yeah. Paula Reed tried to get him to focus on February, and he wouldn't. You're not going to get an argument from me, Doug. You're not going to get an argument from me. I know we agree on a lot, just about everything. Doug Basham, always appreciate it when you take some time to join us. It's always a good spirited debate with my co-host, J.D. Sharp, and I appreciate you, my man. I look forward to your show on Saturday. Thanks for coming on. Always my pleasure, guys. Be safe. All right. Doug, appreciate Doug, it. Thanks, thanks lot, Doug. Doug. That is Doug Basham. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Ainsley Earnhardt, is that her name? I don't know. She's a dope. Uh, I'll explain why uh, coming up. She said something really stupid on Fox News. You're not going to believe what the Texas lieutenant governor said, or maybe you will. I don't know. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll also take more of your phone calls, 702-257-5396. Again, that number, 257-5396. Take a quick break. Be back right after this. You're listening to The Vegas Take.